If you know me, you know that I am a huge fan of the Dallas Cowboys, and that watching NFL football is basically everything I do every single Sunday in the fall and winter. But in the spring, there's very little opportunity for me and for other football fanatics like me to get their fix, which is why one day on the calendar tends to stand out more than any other for us football addicts, and that is the NFL Draft, a day in late April where we get just a glimpse of football before the long stretch of off-season before the beginning of the next season. But the most recent NFL Draft, which is actually currently taking place, has been really, really weird. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell announcing picks from his living room, with cameras set on coaches and general managers who are also in their living rooms, and of course, the reactions of the soon-to-be NFL players and their families in, you guessed it, their living rooms. It seemed like a weird invasion of privacy, but it was also striking, the absence of the spectacle and stage that usually comes with the NFL Draft, almost as bizarre as me standing here in this room in my grandmother's house recording an extemp speech instead of doing it at an actual tournament. COVID-19 has completely changed the way all of us live our lives. However, it's not the only thing that people are going to care about come November, and it's not the only issue on the presidential ticket. So today I'll be discussing the optics of politics and how those are going to have a huge impact on the presidential election regardless of COVID-19. Additionally, this idea of dignity being on the ballot, and finally, the environment, to demonstrate that no, COVID-19, though hugely important, will not be the only issue on the 2016 presidential ballot. So for starters, I'd like to begin with this idea of optics in politics by discussing the 2016 election. It's a poorly kept secret that many people aged 18 to 34, or millennials, didn't vote in 2016. According to a PBS article that was published on December 10th of that year, 58% of individuals in that demographic didn't vote in 2016. It's also a poorly kept secret that many of those people were supporters of Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign, with 40% of Sanders supporters, according to CNN, on December 15th of 2016, not voting at all. A big reason for this is because Hillary Clinton was seen as diametrically opposed to Bernie Sanders on the burgeoning ideological spectrum of the Democratic Party, something that Jeff Stein of the Washington Post called in a January 15th article for that website the, quote, ideological war of the Democratic Party between the Sanders and Warren camp progressives and the Clinton and Biden camp centrists, or establishment players. As a result, what this means is that if we are to take any lessons from 2016, it's hugely important that the Biden campaign, or perhaps the Trump campaign, be able to establish themselves as somewhat more progressive than establishment. Because regardless of how different these two characters may be on the issues, it doesn't really matter as much as how they are perceived. And this is also hugely important. As Pew Research publishes in March 31st, 73% of Bernie Sanders supporters say that Joe Biden is better on coronavirus than Donald Trump. However, only 45% of Bernie Sanders supporters say that they are planning on voting for Biden. What this means is that Sanders supporters, who are a key group in winning the 2020 election, are not necessarily sold on Joe Biden because of the optics, and not because of coronavirus, which they support him on. It's also important to demonstrate that Joe Biden is running a campaign based on this idea of dignity. It's very important to his supporters. In fact, a plurality of his supporters, according to another Pew Research poll that was also published on March 31st, say that being presidential is the most important descriptor for a prospective president, over words like compassionate and pragmatic. What this means is that having the dignity in the presidential office, which many liberals and Democrats see as having been lost under Donald Trump, having that dignity restored in the office is a key reason that Joe Biden supporters are going to be voting for him, and a key reason that many people who may be undecided may want to go to either Biden or to Trump. This is very similar to what happened in 2014, which Frank Breyer of Purdue University, a political science professor, called the campaign of dignity. And he, in a 2020 follow-up published in the New York Times on January 1st, said that 2020 will be like 2004 on steroids. He says that there will be not a single issue discussed, and instead, it'll all be just about the character, ethics, and dignity of each player in politics. What this means is that the single issue of COVID-19 
may not even make its way onto the stage because voters are going to be much more concerned about how the president is saying and doing his actions rather than the actions that he's putting into place. Finally, it's also important to note that there is a very significant issue that COVID-19 doesn't begin to address, and that is the environment. 58% of self-described single-issue voters, according to an article published in NBC News on January 5th of this year, say that the environment is the single issue that they care about the most. And organizations like the Green Coalition and the Sunrise Movement have sprung up over the course of the last few years, demanding a Green New Deal and bold, climate-centered action. However, those two organizations and many other organizations like them have refused to endorse Joe Biden because he is so weak on the environment, even though it is generally accepted that these organizations are going to be more liberal and left-leaning than their counterparts. As a result, what this shows is that the Democratic Party's base isn't necessarily sold on Joe Biden, and that many independents who see themselves as pro-environment single-issue voters are not going to be voting in 2020 unless Joe Biden makes a bigger case for the environment in his policies, or perhaps if Donald Trump does the same. Ultimately, however, what it means is that how much people care about the environment in many cases will outweigh how much they care about COVID-19, and that COVID-19 is not the only issue that matters. So though coronavirus has completely changed my way of life and yours, it's not the only thing that's on the ballot in 2020. It's also important to note that independents and Bernie Sanders supporters are going to look to the optics of politics to determine where they're going to be voting. It's also important to note that dignity and character are going to be on the ballot more so than even in 2004. And it's finally important to note that the environment is still the most significant issue to many people. And thus, COVID-19 is not the only issue on the presidential ballot. Thank you.